So you make music, whether you're a singer, songwriter, producer, maybe you're an artist, maybe you're in a band, maybe you're a composer, you make music. That's the point. 2023 needs to be a big year for you, it needs to be a big year for me, it needs to be a big year for all of us. The question is, how do you make it as a musician in 2023 when the music industry is shifted? Well, we have to shift. And in this video, I'm going to show you the entire structure and how you can get organized. You can really keep yourself aligned and in check. And this is going to be a huge benefit and a game changer for you if you pay attention. Go get something to write with right now. Let's get into it. Now, in the current day and age, it seems like the best of times and the worst of times. The music industry is in shambles as far as how the old model used to work. And now as independent artists, we have more leverage, more power, more ability and opportunity than ever before. But where do you start? Now, as an independent music creator, I'm just blanket statementing it. So no matter what you do, for the most part, this is going to apply directly. Attraction, nurturing, promotion. Those are three things that no matter how broken you feel like your system is, it's one of those three things, or maybe all three. Attraction, bringing people in, lead generation, right? You're getting prospects that might like your stuff. And then you nurture those relationships. You really bring them in. You have genuine conversations through your content. Doesn't need to be one-on-one -on -one in the DMs all the time. And then those people are able to be promoted to. If you are just trying to promote everybody right on the street, you're a salesman. And salesmen will land a few opportunities here and there, but we really need to turn you into a brand. We need to turn you into a marketer. We need to turn you into a relationship builder and a leader. So with that being said, everything that we're gonna be going through can directly correlate to attraction, nurturing, or promotion. So make sure that you wrote that down if you're taking notes. So the first thing, I think it's self-explanatory, but we need to make sure that our music is up to a quality standard. The content is actually not nearly as important as the music because we're leading everybody, we're building this brand, we're building an audience, a fan base, to then deliver to some type of music, right? I would, I would hope you would agree. If you don't have any music, that's okay. A lot of these things you need to start working on anyway. If you're just kind of half butting it uh, to where it's not to a certain standard, then don't get upset when people aren't enjoying it or partaking or it's not getting pushed. And I'm not saying that you have to have a multi-thousand dollar home studio setup. There's a lot of people that are making uh, passable quality music just from their home with some really, really cheap gear. And I know a lot of you guys are already on that, but I need to start there because we can't be bringing people in and pre pretending like we have a professional product pretending. And then when you bring them in, they're disappointed. And then you're blaming the marketing or blaming this and that, like your music has to be to a certain standard that is subjective, but just keep that in mind when we're increasing our skill sets. That's the base music exists. Now let's move on. Now, the first thing that you have to focus on, in fact, I was just talking about this with one of my current students, is brand development. We don't wanna call it artist development because artist development is what labels do to just get one piece of the pie. They're gonna push you in one angle. They don't want you to have leverage. They don't want you to have any power. They don't want you to be able to bring a fan base away from them if you wanna be a free agent. So brand development is what people are left with in between music releases, in between music videos, in between merch drops, touring, all that stuff. Who are you? Just I gave this example not too long ago. It's like documentaries. The best documentaries are the ones that have the most origin content. The best documentaries are the ones that you feel a connection with this person on a screen that you've never had actual interactions with because you feel like you've been there through their journey. You feel like you've earned some type of relationship. So we have to look at your brand. What differentiates yourself? The brand is who you really are, unless you really understand who you are. And I'm not saying that you have to have this crazy expensive, you know, fashion sense and expensive cameras. And we'll talk about that here in a second, but it's like, who are you at the end of the day to your people? Obviously, I'm not talking about who you are when you roll out of bed and your hair's disheveled and you look tired and you're not ready for the day. I'm talking about your best foot forward. Who are you? We need to look at those brand narratives in terms of this is this is my mission statement per se. This is my you know, goal. This is my core values or these are my core values for these people that I'm then going to deliver an experience to. Branding is a whole lot more than a logo. It's a whole lot more than cer using certain filters on a social platform. It's who are you when people discover you? Who are you within that experience? And that needs to be the first and foremost thing because there's a ton of that make music. What makes you different? 
Now, the next thing you have to focus on is avenues of visibility, right? We talked about attraction, visibility, one and the same. When you have people coming and discovering your content, and we're going to be building up that content ecosystem, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But the avenues of visibility. Where do you want to spend the most time? I'm not the guy who's going to tell you that you have to be omnipresent. You have to be on Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest and all these different places. Typically just pick two or three that you really want to focus on and dominate because everyone else will come to trickle to those. Uh, when you're really, I don't know, when, when you're really focused on just two or three, you're going to go a whole lot further than being diluted over all of them. Now, I just mentioned content ecosystem, which is so important here. So you have the brand in place, you know where you want to put yourself out there, but what does your ecosystem look like? Not posting the same thing on every platform as we talk about here on YouTube, but what, where are people going to discover you? And then how are you going to retain them? How are you going to gain reach? What do your content buckets look like? Because if you're posting the same thing on TikTok today, the same thing over on Instagram, the same thing on, I don't know, YouTube for shorts or, or even Facebook, you're not giving anybody any type of uh, variety, no assortment. It's just same thing. So why would they follow you on multiple different platforms? You need to bring people in, retain them. And that comes from nurturing to build, build those relationships. And that all comes from attraction. Attraction, they find you, nurture, they stay, promotion. You're then able to have a connection and pitch them something essentially. So you need to look at your content ecosystem in a way where you're taking those two or three, maybe four if you're super ambitious, different platforms. How are they interconnected? What does that user journey look like? You need to have that all ironed out as you're building this because you want to meet people where they are. You need to understand the different platform languages because what I post on Instagram is not exactly what I post on TikTok and it's certainly not what I post over on YouTube or here on YouTube. So keep that in mind when you're building out your ecosystem. Who are you? Where do you want to be? And what does that experience look like? Now we're talking about a music career. So we need to look at distribution outlets. First and foremost, if you are to a point where you're releasing music. Definitely sign up for a pro. Uh, there's Sesic, there's uh, BMI, there's ASCAP, and a few, depending on where you live, those are like the main three here in America. But we have to look at things like distribution to streaming platforms. This could be DistroKid. There's a bunch of other ones. Side note, if you're not signed up for any of these distributors, I highly recommend DistroKid. I have a link in the description box below where you can get a juicy discount. Shout out to DistroKid, not sponsored here, but um, you also can look at things like song trust to make sure that you're getting royalties and they're tracking where your music is played because let's face it you're going to be a big deal one day if you stick to this and we want to make sure that you're getting paid so music distribution look at it as a whole not just streaming not just mechanical royalties not just trying to get radio spins all of it together and really get that ironed out all right so just to recap we have the brand we have where you want to be what your experience looks like you have your music all set up to push out to the people now we have to get that music release strategy in place. What that looks like is your content calendar around a release, what your release uh, schedule over the course of the year is going to look like. Having those things lined up and really succinct is so important because we have this music, right? And you spend the time on the music, you really care about the music. And I know a lot of you guys are kind of, uh, you don't enjoy social media as much as maybe some of you guys do, right? So, And I get it. There's days where I don't want to shoot these. There's days where I don't want to be on social media, but it's, it's a free avenue to get attention from all over the world. So I need you to start taking a little bit more time and attention on your content to match the vibe, match the energy that you want people to experience when you're talking about a new single, when you're talking about music that you're working on. You can't be melancholy monotone. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like there's going to be outliers that have those personality traits. And I want you to be true to who you are. That's super important here, but we have to build momentum. We have to build energy and anticipation patient. And that's what we're doing through a release strategy. Don't just get your master back on a Tuesday and say, I'm going to go live with this on Friday because you're doing yourself a huge disservice. It's all about planning. It's being organized and treating this like a business. Now, speaking of business, I think it's safe to say that you need to make money in order to operate a business and consider it a business, right? Unless you're a 503C, which they have operating costs anyway. So money needs to come in as a music creator, especially if you want to do it for a long time, right? As a career. So we have to look at the different monetization opportunities, structures that you guys could start implementing, pick a couple and then get good at those and then build on from that. Now, I know that some of you guys are blinded by the, the number for streaming, right? Spotify's not paying enough. Title's not paying enough. I'd argue that nobody pays enough, right? Even labels, they don't pay enough, even if you have a good deal. 
right? So we have to look at how we can diversify our income streams. Maybe it is streaming, maybe it's royalties, mechanical. Royalties earned through the reproduction of copyrighted works in digital and physical formats. Songwriters are paid mechanical royalties per song sold, downloaded, and streamed via on-demand streaming services. Maybe it's merch, maybe it's gigging, maybe you have a, a bomb Patreon. And side note, if you want help building out anything that we're talking about here, I do have a mentorship program. It's not for everybody, but I do uh, invite all you guys to apply. There'll be a link in the description. We'll see, we'll see what that looks like. Anyway, monetization is when you bring people in and again, attraction, nurture, promo. Now we're to the promo stage where we're, get, we're promoting our new single, getting a ton of people over to stream it. A little bit of money trickles in from that. Maybe we got it on radio. Maybe we got it on a TV show through a sync placement. Shout out to Mark Eckert, one of my good friends. Go and check out thatpitch.com, not a sponsor. So what we have to do is look at the different avenues that make sense for you and how you're gonna connect with your audience, big or small. I have students right now in my program that have less than 5,000 followers that are making two, $300 a month just from a, a successful Patreon launch and people really wanting to contribute. How many streams a month would that cost? Or how many streams would, would that take to make two, 300 bucks a month, right? So there's different avenues. I need you guys to open your mind and look at the opportunities that are best for you. Now, one of the most important things, write this down, for you to be a successful musician in 2023 is keeping an open mind, looking towards the horizon and not focusing on your numbers today and then tomorrow. It's like weighing yourself three times a day when you're trying to lose weight. Focus on the actions, focus on the diet, focus on the exercise, your sleep, instead of looking at that scale three times a day and discouraging yourself. We have to increase your averages. We have to build your overall visibility or attraction. Then you really need to spend a little bit of time and nurture those relationships, show appreciation, empathy, and just a genuine joy and excitement that people are consuming anything that you put out. We have to look at it that way, right? And one thing I need you to do within that open mind is be open to advice, open to feedback, open to criticism, even though sometimes it's kind of harsh. There's a difference between like trolling, haters, and all this stuff, and like genuine criticism, right? So we as creators, we as leaders, we as business people, entrepreneurs, need to weather the storm and, and get used to being told that we're not perfect, right? Because none of us are, even myself included, obviously. One thing I want you to look at, guys, is all of your notes that we just took. We'll put a, a visualization up on the uh, screen right now to show you kind of what we walked through in this video. I want you to look at all these and tell me in the comment section right now which ones you want me to deep dive, which ones are of most interest and which ones do you feel the most confused about. Now, speaking of nurture, I wanna know what kind of music you make in the comments below. So many new people are subscribing every single week. I can't keep up with all of them, but I'm the one that's jumping into the comments and looking at everybody responding. We need to be able to build this community to where you guys tell me what you need help with so I can make fun, exciting, hopefully educational and beneficial tool type videos that you can use to build your career. Super exciting seeing people in the comments year after year, but a lot of new faces and I wanna see where you came from. I wanna see what kind of music you make and what you need the most help with. Speaking of help, watch this video next to really help move you in the right direction. This touches on one of the things that we talked about in this video specifically. It's going to help you click that little subscribe button if you haven't yet to join the channel family here. Come connect with me over on Instagram and TikTok where I'm most active. And until next time, I appreciate you watching.